when we obey God, we're not doing it for God. I mean, that's one way to look at it. We're doing it for ourselves. Because God takes pleasure when we're happy. That's the thing that gives Him the greatest joy this morning. So I want you to know this morning, just do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship Him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself. Because that's what makes God happy. Amen. The gay men and women who grew up in church and the gay men and women who've come to faith in Christ as adults who want to participate in our church Oh my goodness. I know 1 Corinthians 6 and I know Leviticus and I know Romans 1. It's so interesting to talk about all that stuff. But just, oh my goodness, a gay man or woman who wants to worship their heavenly father, who did not answer the cry of their heart when they were 12 and 13 and 14 and 15, God said no and they still love God. We have some things to learn from a group of men and women who love Jesus that much and who wanna worship with us. And I know the verses, I know the clobber passages, right? We gotta figure this out. And you know what? I think you are. I think you wouldn't come to a conference like this or you wouldn't have come back, right? We are, and we'll be criticized for it. And there's no perfect way to do this. It's also kind of invaded the church world. And uh, what I love about our church is you have different races, different faces, different um, backgrounds, but people are committed to one cause and, and it makes us- So it's not special. a sin in your church to have an abortion? Um, that's the kind of conversation we would have, finding out your story, where you're from, what Work you believe. Work through it, like talking yeah, about Yeah, I mean, God's the judge. People have to live to their own convictions. And mm -hmm. I think if I have to tell you, mm -hmm. um, that's such, a, that's such a broad question to me. I'm going, I'm going higher. I want to sit with somebody and say, where do you believe? Um, so it's I, not an open and shut case with you. Some people would say it is. I, I think to me, I'm trying to teach people who Jesus is first, mm -hmm. find out their story. Before I start picking and choosing what I think is sin in your life, mm -hmm. I'd like to know so your I name. So I believe that a husband and wife can and should enjoy sexual intimacy with each other. But are there certain forms of birth control that we should be aware of? I think there is. Abortifacients like the morning after pill for RU486 or abortions. And even the pill, I think we should be aware of that it can thin out the lines of the uterine walls, making it hard for the embryo to attach to. So I would encourage you to maybe do some research in that area. Do anchoring, what am I anchoring this to? I'm not anchoring because the Bible says, the, I quit saying the Bible says nine years ago. I don't think I've said it yet since, unless it just slipped out. Quit saying the scripture says, quit saying all that because I quit believing it. No, it's a change very of approach. Christian conservative household. I'm a very faithful woman. Like many parents facing this severe and devastating diagnosis, the Hartles opted to terminate the pregnancy. The best option to protect our daughter from pain and suffering was to send creator, holy one, and diva of the world. This United Methodist Church is my home. It's my family. Let's have a frank conversation about this abortion issue. Let me just start off by saying that I am really pro-life. I believe in the sanctity of life, but I also believe in a woman's right to choose. I wanna talk about this. Salvation, when we talk about salvation, salvation has two parts. Salvation in this life and salvation for eternity. I believe, and you've heard me say it up here before, that God will save everyone eternally. I believe that if hell exists, it will be empty. That God's love will win at the end of the day. The scripture says, it's not the will of the Father that any would perish, but all would come to repentance. And so the big question is, does God get what God wants? I say, yes. Did you know that Jesus helped his friend come out? In John chapter 11, verse 43, this is what it says. Jesus called out in a loud voice saying, Lazarus, come out. You see, Lazarus was locked up in a cold, dark tomb, wrapped in burial cloths, left for dead. That's exactly what so many Christians and so many churches do to LGBT people. They wrap us up and bind us up and tell us that we need to keep our identity, our true self locked away. But Jesus, upon seeing Lazarus in this state, he says, Lazarus, come out. 
Step into the light. Take off the cloth. Be who you are. Come alive. I believe that this is what Jesus is speaking to every LGBT person. The holy and queer one be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship. My name is Caroline Camp. I use she, they pronouns. We want to affirm everyone to be who they truly are, to step into the Holy One's fire that burns away all that says we are not good enough and refines us by the Pentecostal fire to be who exactly the great queer one calls us to be.